Hey there folks, John here with Through My Lens, and today I'm coming to you with an unboxing and first impressions video. Today we're going to be looking at the Benchmade 560BK1 Freak, aka the Super Freak. I don't know about you, but whenever I say that, Rick James just gets inside my head. He starts taking up real estate there, he starts dancing, he starts singing. It's inevitable. But, and hey, I know what you're saying. John, what is going on? Two days in a row, two knife unboxing videos. What what the heck? Well, I know it's been a while since I've done anything with knives, and what can I say? I go kind of hot and cold with knives. Uh, I'll go for a really long time, really happy with the knives that I've got. Then all of a sudden, the bug will hit me, and I'll start uh, looking online at reviews and videos and websites, and I'll, I'll order a couple of knives, and that's exactly what's what's happened. So... We're going to be doing another unboxing of this Benchmade Super Freak. So without further ado, let me go ahead and uh, pop this one open. I will again use my uh, Victorinox uh, Swiss Army knife that I keep in my pocket. Oh, very nice, John. I'm, I guess I'm going to do a nail filing video here. Oh, pulled out the same one again. There it is. There's the blade. Now let's go ahead and pop this open. There we go. We're good there. There we go. Now, right off the bat, you know, the, the packaging is fine. The box, I, I don't really care much about boxes. Uh, but <clears throat> it's been a lot of years since I bought a bench made knife, and we'll talk about that here in a bit. Uh, but the thing that hasn't changed in, in all that time is the fact that they still come in these silly bags. What are you going to use this bag for? Um, it offers very little actual protection for the knife. Why doesn't Benchmade send their knives in a zipper pouch like we does, for example, or uh, any number of other uh, knife companies that uh, they tend to be the, the Asian ones that do that. Uh, you know, clearly they uh, have a little bit more margin because of the cost of labor there, but still, um, zipper pouches aren't that much, and I think you know they are they are so much more useful. So uh, there's a ding on Benchmade for not including zipper pouches with their knives. That is far more useful than this silly little bag. So we'll go ahead and take this axis lock thing off there and take the box out of the way. And here is the knife. So what do we think about the knife? That is some really sharp G10, um, not as in Texture sharp, but as in aesthetically pleasing, uh, good looking. Uh, looks really good with the the blade, um, the coated blade. Very nice. There is the pocket clip. It is the uh, kind of standard one that Benchmade has. No jokes, please. This is a family show. Uh, I did uh, a couple of days ago put a call into Benchmade and uh, ordered. Uh, a deep carry pocket clip. <clears throat> so I'm sure that will be here uh, and on the knife when I do the review. Uh, again, this is an unboxing, so after I've used it for a few days, I will do a full review. So why did I pick this up? I had actually kind of sworn Benchmade off um, for a couple of reasons. One, it had been a lot of years since they really made anything that caught my eye. Some of the first uh, knives that I bought that were of quality and, and uh, somewhat higher end were Benchmade knives, uh, some of the Osborne design knives. And eventually just the the odd uh, blade shape, you know, I just found out it wasn't to my liking. This is going back probably 10 years ago when I was kind of new to knives. I've been collecting for at least 10 years, if not longer. Um, kind of had knives all my life, really. My dad used to uh, collect and buy and sell and trade knives, mostly uh, the old-timey kind of knives. Um, 
Um, also had an affinity for uh, Swiss Army knives. So, you know, the I, the only knife that I still have that's bench made is a Griptilian, and the only reason I uh, I kept it is because I made I did it in the custom shop. But I was never really in love with the Griptilian because of the uh, the FRN handles. Um, and the blade shape of the Griptilian just never really did it for me. Um, liked the axis lock, uh, thought that was neat, but uh, you know the the rest of the aesthetics really didn't just didn't work for me. And then last year I was you know really kind of upset with Benchmade over that brouhaha uh, that uh, was surrounding Benchmade when it got out that they assisted a local police department in cutting up some knives. Uh, some of you may remember that happening uh, in 2019. That part of the story really didn't bother me so much. I can certainly understand the police going to them and, and uh, them uh, cooperating with the police and cutting up the guns that uh, were brought to them to, to uh, get destroyed. What did bother me, though, is uh, during that whole fiasco, uh, it was discovered that they had spent a lot of money uh, politically, uh, lobbyists and and uh, you know, funding candidates uh, and so forth uh, for what I'll call anti two A, anti Second Amendment uh, uh, candidates or political uh, political interests. <clears throat> and having more t time to think about that, do I think that Benchmade as a company is anti Second Amendment? No. Um, they have uh, at times uh, supported Second Amendment interests. Uh, they've put knives on prize tables at shooting events. Uh, the company, I don't think, is anti-Second Amendment. Uh, what I do think uh, happened is that they spent some money on some candidates and interests to help them. Uh, it just so happened that uh, those political interests also happen to be anti-Second Amendment, but their 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 company interest was was probably spending money, uh, you know, for their particular uh, political issue, uh, and, you know, which obviously has to do with knives and knife laws and so forth to make it easier for them to sell knives. Uh, it still get you know it's it still makes me look sideways at Benchmade a little bit uh, because. You know, I, I know I can spend my money with other companies that aren't spending money in that way, but I, I've kind of gotten over it. Um, uh, you know, I did uh, discover this knife recently. It came out last year. Uh, the Freak is a relatively new model for uh, Benchmade, and uh, it's been out for a couple of years. I think I remember uh, I, w I actually went to Blade Show one year, I think, when the Freak first came out. Um, and or maybe that was at Shot Show. I forget which show that I that I saw that when that debuted, and and thought it was interesting. I liked the blade shape, uh, the uh, that kind of rubbery handle with the FRN uh, uh, kind of cutout that was in the center of it. Uh, didn't thrill me. Uh, saw it, thought it was okay. This version with you know G10 handle scales and uh, this wonderful red, uh, the red. Uh, aluminum standoffs and then the red liners that are in there. Uh, that really caught my attention aesthetically. I uh, thought it was fantastic. The uh, the blade shape, uh, I don't, I never cared for again the Griptilian uh, blade shape, but this one uh, is very similar to uh, uh, the, the Doug Ritter uh, blade shape that was on the Ritter models that they produced up until 2016. I like this blade shape a lot. Uh, aesthetically, this this knife just does it for me. Uh, a lot of times, depending on the color and, and how it's done, uh, G10 when it's done like this can kind of look like tree bark to me, uh, and it just uh, I tend to pr not like it. But in in this knife, in this gray and black, uh, the way it's done here, I, I really like it. Um, it's smooth, but there are some ridges uh, in this. G10 that I think do uh, probably improve the grip a little bit, uh, depending on where you grab it and how you grab it. Um, ergonomically, not bad at all. Um, 
thumb kind of naturally goes into the jimping. And notice that it kind of dips down here uh, where your thumb goes. So your thumb really locks in there. That's a really nice, I like that a lot. Um, that's pretty impressive. Um, pretty standard axis lock. Certainly doesn't want to fall shut, but that's okay. It is a little tight. It certainly needs to be worn in. This is certainly not as nice as um, the uh, Ritter MK2 that I, that I got in uh, and posted the video on yesterday. Uh, it's not as smooth. It's requiring a little bit more effort to both open and close, but I'm sure it will, uh, it will work in. Um, yeah, it's, it's not bad. Let's see. Feels very sharp, very comparable to the, the Bitter MK2. Very impressive for a factory edge. Let's see how the blade centering is. Benchmade has had some problems with that in the past. Um, yeah, that's perfectly centered. Very, very happy with that. Very nice. Not too thick. I think this is going to fit in pocket very nicely. Uh, I think this blade's a, a touch longer than the MK2 that it, uh, uh, you saw the video on yesterday. Uh, you know, maybe 0.1 or 2 inches longer, uh, but it doesn't feel really that much different in size. I think the two knives are pretty comparable. Uh, I like the all black hardware that uh, just, uh, you know, flows very nicely aesthetically with the blade and the, the G10 handle scales. Very, very nice. This is the, probably the first Benchmade that I have seen in a long, long time that I really like, uh, really impressed. So I'm gonna use this for a few days, uh, probably uh, lubricate it a bit, and I will do a full review uh, prob probably uh, you know next week or so. So there you have it, there's my unboxing and first impressions video on the Benchmade 560 BK1 Freak or the super freak. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care, God bless. We'll see you in the next one. I hope you've enjoyed this production from the Through My Lens YouTube channel. If you did, please click on the like button and do share the video on social media. If you'd like to see more content like it, please do subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and do check out Through My Lens at www.throughmylens.org.